Welcome to Crafty Chemist Designs. Today, I am going to show you how to create this pop-up gatefold card. Let's get started. First, you're going to need a piece of solid colored cardstock. I am using Glacier cardstock here, and I'm going to cut it at 10 inches by 7 inches. This is going to make a 5 by 7 inch finished card. Then with the 10 inch side of the paper along the top, I'm going to score it at two and a half inches and then flip it and score it at two and a half inches again. Or you can score it at two and a half inches and seven and a half inches. Now I'm going to just fold it in a little bit just so I can see those score lines better. And with the paper with the seven inch side to the top, I'm going to cut one inch from the edge only between the two score lines. And then I'm flipping it 180 degrees and again cutting one inch from the edge only between the two score lines. Okay, now let's score the card in half right along the five inch mark, but you're only going to score from the top to the one inch cut mark and then from the one inch cut mark on the bottom to the edge of the paper. And lastly, we are going to score only between the two cut lines at three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to flip it and score it again at three quarters of an inch. If you don't want to flip your paper, you're going to score it at six and three fourths on the other side. That makes a little side panel so that center piece will pop out. Next, I'm going to train my folds a little bit. So I'm going to fold along the score line. Those one inch pieces should be popping out towards the back. So I'm making a valley fold there, but I want that center panel to pop out. So I'm going to make mountain folds along those square lines that were three and a quarter and six and three quarters. And then fold the side flaps in to make a gatefold. Now let's cut our mats for the pattern paper. And the first piece that I'm going to cut is two and a quarter inches by six and three quarters inches. You're going to need four pieces of these. So four pieces that are two and a quarter by six and three quarters. If you want different color on the front, cut two of one color and two of the other. Next, I am cutting the little center pieces that go um, on the top and the bottom. And those pieces are two and a quarter by three fourths of an inch. So you need four of those. And this piece I'm cutting is four and three quarters. And I'm cutting it a half inch. Those are for the side pop outs. So four and three quarters by a half inch. You need two of those. Now I'm taking a piece of pattern paper and I am cutting this piece at four and a half by three inches. And that's for the center pop-up panel. And then I'm going to cut four pieces that are two inches by a half inch. And these are for those um, one inch uh, wide pop outs at the top and the bottom. Now these pattern papers are for the inside side flaps of my card and I'm cutting these at two inches by six and a half. I'm going to make my flaps, my side flaps that are on the front and the side flaps that are on the back or on the inside, two different pattern papers. So I'm cutting two pieces of this pattern paper two inches by six and a half. And then I'm going to cut a different pattern piece two inches by six and a half. But if you want to make 
the front and the inside the same, then you can just cut four pieces of that. Okay, here's the pattern paper that I'm going to use for the front. And again, I'm cutting this two inches by six and a half inches. So those are for the front side flaps. Okay, now let's start applying these to the card base. So I'm taking the solid colored cardstock and I'm just going to fill the inside. These pieces that are two and a quarter by six and three quarters are going to go on the side flaps. So I'm going to center them in that area. Okay, I'm going to apply adhesive to the other side flap. And this is the two and a quarter by six and three quarters piece. Putting it on the left side flap. Get it nice and centered. Okay, now I'm going to put the mat for that center pop-out panel. Add a little bit of adhesive and center it in that center pop-out. I love this color combination. Okay, these pieces are the half inch by four and three quarters inches, and they go on the center pop out on the sides. I'm using all the same colored matting, but you could do different colored mats if you want. It's just easy to cut all of them out of the same piece of paper. Okay, now I've got that second center side panel done. Now these pieces are the two and a quarter by three quarter inches. And they are going to go, you see there at that strip along the bottom. And there's two of those on the bottom. That's a two and a quarter by three a quarter inch piece. And I'm trying to line them up so they look, you know, even. And then I'm going to do the same along the top. So that piece is two and a quarter by three quarters of an inch. Apply adhesive to this last piece for the inside. Now you can see I have the inside nice and matted. And now I'm going to do the last two pieces of solid colored cardstock and put them on the front flaps. These are the pieces that are going to fold in. So this is really going to be the front of your card. Since it's a gatefold, those are going to be coming in um, and closing up the card. So when a person takes it out of the envelope, this is what they're going to be seeing. Okay, and then I'm going to put this on the right side front flap. Get that nice and centered. And you can see my gatefold comes perfectly together in the center. Okay, now let's add the pattern paper. This pattern paper that I'm using comes from the Wonderland collection. This is a little bit older collection, but I really love this color combination. So this pattern paper is the four and a half by three inch piece and that goes in the center pop-up panel. Okay, now I am applying adhesive to the pattern paper that I'm going to use on the side flaps and those pieces are two inches by six and a half inches and they're going to be centered right along that mat. So that's the left hand side. I love the design on this. It's kind of a winter theme with like a cabin and some trees and a frozen pond. Okay, so I'm, now I'm going to do the little top pieces. And those are the one half inch by two inch pieces. I am using the back side of uh, that pattern paper they're little snowflakes, but you could make it the same, the same pattern if you want to. I 
personally like my inside pieces to be a more plain piece so that my sentiments and decorations show up and then the side panels to be a little bit more busy pieces um, because I'm not going to be putting any decorations there so um, I like them to sort of stand on their own okay so I've got those two inch by half inch pieces two at the top and two at the bottom now I'm going to put the side flat pieces on the front of the card Okay, and this, again, I used a different pattern from that same collection for the front. And this one, I like to use a piece that's a little more um, subdued, but that has a little bit of design because I'm not doing much on the front. But I am going to have a center showpiece um, on the belly band, so I like it to be a little bit more plain. Okay, and lastly, I'm going to be putting these quarter inch pieces by four and a half inch on the side center pop out pieces. And again, I'm using that more subdued design on these. So on the inside, I am using three different types of pattern paper. The ones that are on the inside the very center are all subdued and then those flat pieces are a little more stand on their own. And I'm trying to get this centered up so that it matches the other side piece and that center pop out. So we have the base done for these. And now you can decorate it however you want. I'm going to use the Wonderland stamp set that goes with this collection. And so I'm stamping my sentiment on a piece of um, die cut that I, that I cut out. And I stamped that in wisteria. And now I'm going to stamp a couple snowflakes in glacier to go along with the colors of the papers. So this is going to be my sentiment panel. You could stamp right on the center panel on your card if you want. Okay, here I'm stamping an image that's a house with a little frozen pond by it and a tree. Here's another little scene. It is um, some trees in a pond and a deer. I'm stamping this in rosemary because of the trees, but that matches the rosemary that's on the front paper um, of my card. And I'm doing um, another one in rosemary, and this is another house scene with some trees. I really love the stamp set. And then I did stamp a couple other just trees. Um, those were done in mulberry and rosemary. I actually might have had those already stamped on the inside of my stamp set, and I'm just using them here. Okay, I'm putting my greeting. It just fits inside there. And then I'm going to adhere my little scene with the trees. Okay, I like that. I'm just kind of deciding what to use as I, as I go along here. But whatever you use, you don't want it to really um, be too much bigger than your center panel because those side flaps are going to be coming in. So you want to try and keep it as much as you can on that center panel. It can go a little bit off the edge towards those skinny, you know, side pieces that are pop out, but not much more than that. And you definitely can't put adhesive on those side pieces because um, those side pieces are going to be popping back. So like I said, try and keep everything on that center pop up panel. I'm adhering the little trees. 
Now you can sign this card either down on those small pieces, you know, the small rectangles at the bottom, or you can write whatever you want on the back. That would be my recommendation. I decided to add a few pieces of this flower confetti because I think that this flower confetti looks like little snowflakes. So I'm just adding about five pieces here to make it look like it's snowing. So I'm using my little pickup tool for each of the flower confetti pieces and then just sticking them down. I did put a few dots of liquid glass on the card base and now I'm just sticking the confetti right where I put those dots of liquid glass. You don't want anything too um, dimensional here. Okay, now I'm going to do the belly band and this belly band I'm using a zip strip from the Wonderman collection or you can use a piece that's one half inch by ten and a half inches. And I wrapped it around my card base so that I could see where the folds were going to be. And then I just put a small strip of adhesive to make you know this into a loop, like a little this is the belly band, so I'm closing up the belly band. And I before I add my stamped design, I want to make sure that this is a good fit. You want the belly band to hold the card together. So you want it to be tight enough to hold the card together, but you don't want it to be too tight where you can't get it on and off the card easily. Okay, so I'm going to take it out. And I realize I had the card upside down, but that's okay. And I'm going to put the stamped image on the belly band and I'm using red line tape. You could use regular adhesive, but I want this to be really strong, strongly adhered to the belly band because people may be pulling on that, you know, to get the belly band on and off. So I wanted it to be strong to withstand that pulling. So I just decided to use the red line, the red line tape. And you only want to put adhesive on about a half inch strip of this image because you don't want adhesive hanging off of the belly band area otherwise it will you know stick to the card so you want this belly band to freely slide on and off so make sure that your adhesive is only on that half inch strip and make sure you get that when you apply it right along where the adhesive part is okay there we go so i am putting the belly band on to see how it looks now you can see why I wanted to have somewhat of a, a overall plain pattern on the front, not too busy, so that my stamped image shows up. Then I decided I wanted a little bit more decoration, so I am stamping a small sentiment on a banner piece. And that just says, Hello Friend. And it's a little bit longer than that front flap, so I'm going to just trim off the one edge. And so one side of it is uh, dovetailed, and then the other side is going to be uh, straight. And then I'm using a couple more of those stamped trees. Again, one in mulberry, and then I think that other one's in wisteria or rosemary. So I'm putting adhesive on that and I'm just using my regular tape runner and I'm going to put it along that bottom front. Make sure it's centered and that is going to stay on the card front. The belly band is going to come on and off but these ones are attached to the card front. So I'm putting adhesive on the little trees. I just wanted to tie that theme in from the inside a little bit more. The colors on this collection are just so pretty. And there's enough design on that pattern paper so that the card doesn't look too plain, 
but it's subdued enough that you can see these decorated stamped images. You know, they stand out. Making sure I don't have any adhesive sticking off the edge. There we go. I'm putting the other tree, the other tree down. But you can decorate these cards however you want. Thanks for watching. If you'd like any of the products I talk about, you can go to thecraftychemist.closetomyheart.com. I have a Facebook group, Crafty Chemist Designs, where I do live demos every Sunday at 4 p.m. Central. I do have a Facebook VIP group, The Crafty Chemist Presents CTMH. I invite you to join that. I also have an Instagram and TikTok at Crafty Chemist Designs, where I post daily. Thanks for watching.